going to flesh out the view class that we defined late in the previous tutorial. But just to review for a second, in our main activity, we have created a bunch of Java variables to represent the buttons and the text view in our screen. And in the beginning of this initialization procedure, we've taken the layout variables and associated each of them with their corresponding Java variables. We've set the action listeners on each of the buttons, and we've also associated the text view. Uh, let me just show you that. That's this text view right here. And then we've set up this a case switch statement based on the clicking of the buttons. And that puts us in a position to take a different action as each button is pressed. Right now, we're just printing to the debug console which button got pressed. In the same way that each of these widgets, these button widgets and these text view widgets got connected from the layout side uh, to the Java side using these find by view ID commands, we're going to do the exact same thing now with the custom view, this paint pot view that we created in the XML file. Recall that we named that object the drawing pad underscore V on the layout side. Okay, so I've created a state variable to connect to that drawing pad object. And now over here, I'm going to connect that object Okay, so now I'm treating the view class exactly the same way as I'm treating the other widgets. And now I have a handle to that drawing pad that's uh, over here where the dog picture is. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to deal with this dot size variable. Uh, what the dot size does is it, it defines how thick the lines and the dots are going to be when we finger paint on top of our dog picture. So the larger the dot size variable, the thicker the line is going to be when we use our fingers to do the painting. We're going to need to initialize a dot size variable. We're also going to need to keep it in a fixed range so it doesn't get too big or too small. So over here in our paint pot view, let's create a state variable that's going to keep track of the dot size. And I'm going to call that private m dot size. And I'm using the little m here as a a common convention that programmers use to uh, suggest that this is a member variable. I don't do this in all my applications in this course, but I wanted to show you some of the different standards that are out there, and this is the standard I'm choosing to use for this project. We're also going to need some public static constants to define the default value, the max value, and the min value for this dot size. Okay, I've arbitrarily set the default to 10 and the max to 100 and the minimum to 5 and this is going to be the variable that's going to track it. So let's uh, now create a getter and setter method for that dot size variable. Okay, the get dot size is fine. On the set dot size, uh, we're going to change it slightly. Uh, we're going to call this change dot size and the reason why is that instead of supplying the new dot size, we're going to expect the user to supply the increment. And this is going to be more useful to us because every time the user presses the plus button, this button right here, uh, we want the user to be able to increment the dot size without knowing what the previous dot size was. Likewise, with the negative button, we want the user to be able to decrement the dot size. When the app first starts up and the main activity fires, uh, we have already made a note here to initialize the dot size value onto the screen. So I'm going to take this out now and I'm going to actually do that work. Okay, so I'm going to uh, ask the, the drawing pad object what the current dot size is when we first fire up. It's going to return the default dot size, obviously. And then I'm going to update the, the label right here with a number. Back here in the paint pot uh, view class, we obviously need to initialize the dot size now. In fact, this would be a good a time as any to create a general initial, initialization method where we can use to initialize all our variables. Okay, and right here is where we will uh, set up the dot size with its initial value. 
And uh, with that, I think we're ready to uh, run the tester and uh, see if we can get this dot size equals 10 to show up when we first fire up the app. Okay, I have the emulator running, and you can see that the dot size equals 10 is indeed being initialized now on startup. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to program these two buttons uh, to increase and decrease the dot size when they're pressed. Back here in the main activity, I want to handle these two cases right here where the user wants to increase the dot size. So there I'll go. Okay, so that should make it go up and down by 5. And back in the paint pot view, we still want to limit the dot size so that it doesn't go below 5, which is the minimum that we've uh, set up, and doesn't go above 100. Now normally you would be tempted to do that using if-then-else statements, and that's a perfectly reasonable way to do it. I'm going to code this a slightly different way that I think is a little bit more efficient. Okay, I've used these max and min uh, static functions in the math class to uh, create a ceiling and a floor on the dot size variable. For these cases, in addition to changing the dot size, I also need to update the button with the new value. And with that, we're now ready to test to see if our new dot size incrementer and decrementer are working. Here I've got the emulator, and I see that if I press the plus button, it increases by 5. And if I press the minus button, it decreases by 5. Let's see if the max and the min work. I see that if I get it to 5, it stays at 5, which is good. And then let's just see if it works on the positive side with the 100 being the ceiling. So it looks like we've got all that working. The next thing that we're going to program are these three color buttons. To do that, let's go back to our paint pot view activity and introduce another my member variable that's going to track the color. And we're going to initialize uh, a default color here as well. Uh, I'll just arbitrarily set that to green. Okay, and uh, we're going to initialize this similar to the way we initialize the dot size variable. And we're also going to need getter and setter methods for this uh, pen color. So uh, that's all we need to do there. And back in the main activity, we just need to uh, handle these button presses. OK, and that's all we should need to do there. Looking at our switch statement in the main activity, the only button press that we are currently not handling is the reset button. So let me just go ahead and put a stub in there for that. going to call a reset method, but I have not defined the reset method in the drawing pad, so I'm going to let uh, Android Studio do that for me, and there is the reset method, and I'll leave that blank for now, but eventually we're going to need to put some stuff in there to clear out the screen and then uh, redraw a blank canvas with just the dog in it. In the next tutorial, we're going to set up the finger painting using a Java path variable. See you then. Mm -hmm.